Hello, I'm Eric Holdeman, and welcome to Disaster Zone, a show about emergencies and disasters that can happen anywhere and at any time. In today's show, we're talking about social media, how it is impacting our daily lives, and how we interface with one another as individuals and as public and private organizations. Additionally, how is social media being used during emergencies and disasters? My guest today is Elodie Fichet, PhD candidate in communications at the University of Washington. Elodie, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Eric. Very good. So, um, how's that PhD uh, thing coming? It's right? going well. It's going well. About a year left. Okay. So, so yeah, just. Uh, All right. Maybe we'll talk more forward. about that at the end. Sounds great. But yeah, how is social media changing communications? and how we interface as people and organizations. Yeah, absolutely. So social media have had a huge impact on the way we communicate, right? So essentially it connects people and entities. So the idea is that social media shrinks the world as we know it yep. and basically connects people that would not be otherwise connected without it. So it goes from keeping in touch with your friends in Japan or reaching out to a clothing company in South Africa for business or personal purposes, right? So it has um, a variety of, of, of things you can, you can do with social media that you were not able to do um, before, yeah. right? So thinking of immediate access to communication, to information, um, and the way it's changing and reshaping businesses. Um, so it's not a nice to have anymore. Uh, it's a must-have, right? You must have social media strategies for across across industries. And, and when, when do you think it switched from <clears throat> this kind of well, that's kind of interesting experimentation to where, hey, it's expected. I mean, mm -hmm. Is that you know in the last two years, five years? Um, so, I think it's different across industries. Um, I feel like when we look at marketing and you know businesses that strive on on sales and reaching out to consumers and customers, it's been quite a few years now. So I would say probably about ten years that it has actually picked up. Yeah. Um, when we think of governmental agencies, then that's a little bit different, yeah. and I feel like it's a bit more recent. Uh, people that understand that social media is not just useful when you're trying to sell something, yes. but also to raise awareness on a variety of, of things. Okay. You know, when you were talking about worldwide, how we communicate and that, I, I started thinking about pen pals from mm -hmm. when I was <laughs> young. Yeah. And I probably, there aren't pen pals, I don't think, in the traditional sense of finding someone who lives in a foreign country and sending letters back and forth. But um, it's pretty easy today to connect with someone on the other side of the world establish a written yeah. communication style? Type absolutely, of thing. Yeah. absolutely. I feel like as long as there's an, a common interest, yeah. uh, you can become part of any community around the world. Okay. Uh, and it, it's really replaced um, way back when with AOL and, um, well, there'd be chat rooms. Yeah, AIM. I think the chat rooms are probably gone also. Uh, um, so I actually wonder about that. I, I was on AOL and AIM. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So okay. I remember my early days on the internet. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I would think now maybe there are groups or, or what have you. But so on social media, you specialized it in it in um, your university studies. And at, what caused you to think uh, this is what I want to do in area communications. Yeah, so I think it started when uh, I was doing my bachelor in art history in France. Okay. And towards the end of my, my bachelor, I got really interested in um, podcasts and social media and the, the use of them to raise awareness uh, on art in okay. France. So how can we make art more accessible? So I really got interested in, in the in the public relations aspect of, of art and how we could leverage, you know, what was around at the time, so like the early days of, of social media. So okay. I went into um, uh, media and communication for my master's and, and came to UW a couple years ago to do a PhD focusing focusing on that. Okay, and that, you, you know, we are an acronym free. <laughs> uh, so, so it's okay. funny when I say UW to people outside of the this you know immediate area they go huh yeah you know from that so University of University Washington. of Washington there, yes. there we go um, I don't know what they're thinking when we say you dub you know <laughs> the, uh, it, yeah I'm from uh, Northern Illinois and the University of Wisconsin but they don't say you dub uh, hmm. there for that but um, 
And what's your dissertation topic then? Where's yeah, so uh, my dissertation is going to focus on crisis communicators specifically okay. um, and how they are using more creative or innovative um, practices around uh, the use of new technologies so from hardware like tablets to software and things like social media. Okay. So basically how are they um, integrating innovation and and new technologies to respond to crises. Okay, and we're going to be talking more about that in the second yeah, half absolutely. of the show, so you're, yeah. you're our SME subject matter expert <laughs> for that. Um, so how about kind of covering the real broadly, not everybody is extremely familiar with uh, uh, social media, so there's different types, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, Instagram, Newest one for me was uh, Periscope, mm -hmm. uh, which I had not heard of. Looks to be that Google Plus is one that has not taken off. So how do those function today and how are they being used and what, what fits what best? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, social media need to be looked at, you know, they need to be looked at as tools. So basically, to understand how to use them and why use them and how to use them, you essentially need to ask yourself the question, what, what, I, what is my purpose here? What yeah. do I want to achieve? What do I want to do? And going off of that, then you have an array of questions that emerges, like, well, how am I going to uh, reach out to my audience? Uh, what, uh, what am I trying to, to achieve here? So once you answer those questions, then you can start looking at the different channels and what would be the most relevant to what you're doing. So when you think of Facebook, right, probably the most popular one yep. uh, these days, um, then it's probably best to you know use it to keep in touch with your high school friends, uh, trying to see what's trending, what's going on, share pictures, videos, things like that. Um, when you think of Twitter, for example, you get more real-time news. You can follow specific topics yep. uh, using hashtags um, and trying to see what's going on in, in whatever uh, you know world, you're, like realm, you're interested in. So you get more... Um, real-time information and then you move on to more visual uh, channels like Instagram where you can post pictures um, share moments with your friends uh, snapchat which is a bit goofier as an app yeah. uh, with fun filters although companies do start to use it um, increasingly as a marketing tool to reach out to a younger audience okay um, and Periscope, you know, with live streaming. So basically be, yeah, being it's able, all video. Yeah, all video. You're able to capture whatever is around you and broadcast it to, to an audience. And how long are those videos? Do you know on Periscope? Uh, so on Periscope, I don't think there's a time limit. Okay. Um, it just really, you decide how long you want to be filming for. Okay. As long as you can have an audience, right? So you promote your stream through Twitter, yeah. and this is how you can try to garner an audience. Okay. So I remember... There used to be a channel called Vine yeah. that had six-second videos, mm -hmm. and then Twitter bought Vine. Is it still a six-second video on Twitter? So um, I believe they extended that. So now you can post. You still sh it still shows a six-second preview, okay. and you can decide to click on the video and get the longer version of it. Okay. Um, but the, the preview is still six seconds. All right. So uh, this is a personal question. So I'm, <laughs> I'm on Pinterest and I post about cars and gardening and emergency management. Mm -hmm. uh, why would I use Instagram versus Pinterest? So Pinterest is more about creating um, like inspiration boards like you do yeah. with cars and yeah. emergency management. Instagram is more about um, capturing the instant so what are you doing right now? Uh -huh. uh, adding a cool filter to it, a couple of relevant hashtags so people can find your picture, and then posting that. So it's more a, a what I'm doing right now. Almost a little app. bit like Twitter, but different. But yeah, more yeah. visual. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you've mentioned hashtag a couple times. Probably just need yeah. to explain a uh, hashtag is a number sign, but what how's it associated with yeah. social media? So it's like. Um, um, the pound sign yes, right. <laughs> in front of words. And these are topics or things you want to um, associate with a pool of information. So for example, hashtag emergency management. If you add that to your tweet or even add that to your Instagram um, uh, picture or even your Facebook posts, yep. people clicking on this hyperlinked uh, tag now can see all the topics that are related to emergency management. So it's basically tagging 
your post to 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 a, a topic that okay. of your choice. I did not know that you could do a hashtag with Facebook. So you can. Your posts yeah. need to be public if you want them to be discovered. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'll have to remember that. So. Um, How's business using it? You, you talked about some uses there, but uh, how are they using it in their, you know, experience? And, and, and you know, I've got one example I could share with you, but mm -hmm. um, today. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, the idea is very similar. You want to connect with people. Yeah. And brands nowadays really want to be personified, so they don't want to be this um, uh, plain, you know, flavorless entity. They yeah. want to be perceived as this this persona almost, and uh, they want to be able to engage with their audience this way. So that way, the customer feels like they play a part in in the brand, in the company, right? They have a okay. say in it. So there's a there's so an with exchange. Coca Cola like that, or yeah, with with any any brand. Taco Bell on Twitter is pretty active and really okay. funny. So you can have exchanges with you know bantering with Taco Bell yeah. on on Twitter. So essentially, brands want this immediate feedback with customers, yeah. right? So they're able to um, get um, information from their audience pretty much right away. Yeah. So, you know, interesting quick story for you. So um, I was traveling, rented a car, brought it back. They said there was damage. I could not see any damage whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I get a bill for $800. Ooh. And uh, I, there was no dent, scratches, anything. So I started posting on my Twitter thing, here's a picture of what they say is damage, and I don't see any damage. Do you see it? I think this is a ripoff. Was contacted within a half hour on Twitter by the company who had to investigate it, and they came back and said, oh, you, you have no responsibility. Yeah, to go. that's what so, social media is all yeah. about. I think that's, so a, great, that's a great example. All right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, these uh, platforms pop up uh, every few years. I, I mentioned Google Plus, maybe you can talk specifically mm -hmm. uh, like that. Um, Twitter just celebrated 10 year mm -hmm. anniversary, I mm -hmm. think this year. Um, what's on the, what, what do you think is the next thing? Periscope was the latest one I had heard of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you think, have any inclination for what's coming next or what the life cycle is for all of this? So I feel like it's it's hard to it's hard to tell and it, it varies. So the end of Facebook has been prophesied yes. for a while. <laughs> yes. And I think there's a Princeton study that came out recently that said that essentially by 2017, 80% of of Facebook's users would basically drop the channel and stop using it. So has whether, everybody told Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> this, <laughs> the billionaire yeah, founder, right? I, <laughs> uh, I think he's starting to see yeah. it because they're they're yeah. adding new features, yeah. but. Um, so I think that that's, that's what's going on. Uh, there are always like new channels that, that pop up. Uh, and very often those older ones, like Facebook, for example, yeah. try to see how they can adapt and s steal in a yeah. way. Well, like new... Twitter uh, bought Vine yeah. so they could add video. Absolutely. Okay. Or even, you know, with Periscope and live streaming, you know, yeah. soon after, Facebook came up with their own live streaming uh, option, right? So essentially, they made live streaming more mainstream. Okay. Um, so they're they're borrowing features from other um, other channels, other like new apps to yeah. basically keep up with what's what's going yeah. on. Uh, but there are a couple of things that are uh, that are new that are coming up. Um, virtual reality is becoming pretty big. Right. Um, so and so. Um Adaptive virtual as Pokemon yeah. is adaptive virtual virtual. So explain that a little bit. Yeah. So not necessarily Pokemon, but what you mean by <laughs> virtual reality. So essentially, it's creating more of an experience and an adventure versus like a, a, a moment still yeah. in time. Yeah. It's not a game on your phone. Right. It no. it interacts with your environment. Okay. So yeah. this is becoming pretty pretty big. Uh, and I know Facebook apparently is trying to see how they could implement something like that within uh, within the, the the website. Yeah. Um, so virtual reality is big. Live streaming is still pretty big. Um, online shopping is also becoming easier. So yeah. right with Pinterest adding a button, so you can actually buy uh, what you're saying, oh, what you're seeing. I didn't know that. Uh, Twitter also is has has you know things coming up that are similar to that. Yeah. Um, so these are like the things that are that are coming up. Okay. Um, and, and then something like Pokemon, 
yeah. comes out of nowhere as a game, yeah. but it's got that virtual and it takes off like wildfire. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we can see the different uses for virtual reality, reality like this with, you know, healthcare, for yeah. example. Uh, so these are, you know, different areas that may not be as creative and innovative just yeah. yet, right? Because the gaming and entertainment yeah. industry is always ahead for things yeah. like that. Uh, but we can see applications in yeah. other industries. So, so Google Plus was fielded, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago. Any thoughts on why that did not take off? Is it they were too late to the game or? So there are a couple, I think, you know, there are a couple of reasons why um, it hasn't really taken off. Um, it's more of a complex um, interface, so yeah. it is a bit harder to use, and you need to like play around with it a bit more than Facebook, for example, or okay. Twitter. Okay. So people that are not as um, tech savvy might have a harder time getting used to it. Yeah. Um, the name was never really super attractive either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more of a blend between Facebook and LinkedIn for professionals. Uh, so yeah. it's like it's kind of a niche. Like people are not usually yeah. using it. Although the privacy um, is better than Facebook. So people that are very concerned about privacy and how Facebook is using their, their data yeah. may want to turn to Google Plus to still have this social network feel but have their data just be um, more, okay. more protected. Well, certainly you're the expert on this uh, <laughs> in the room. Um, but we're at our break right now. And for you folks at home, we're going to take that break. When we come back, we're going to be talking more about the impacts of social media as it relates to emergencies and disasters. So stay tuned, and we will be right back after this message. In the event of a catastrophe, you need to know what to do to make it through. By preparing now, you and your family will have a better chance of surviving when a catastrophe happens. Here are three tips to get you started. Have an emergency plan with meeting places and an out-of-area contact. Prepare a supply kit for your family and pets that includes what you need to survive for 7 to 10 days. And be prepared to help each other. Start now and take the first step to protect the ones you love. For more information, visit makeitthrough.org or find us on Facebook. Well, welcome back to uh, Disaster Zone. Today's show is on social media. My guest is Elodie uh, Fichet, a PhD candidate in communications at the University of Washington. And the first half of the show, we talked about social media in general, Elodie. Mm -hmm. And now the second half, I want to talk about social media and disasters. You know, my favorite disaster zone <laughs> topic here. So how is social media becoming much more relevant and even critical, I think, in disaster situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because social media has become such a you know, pervasive thing in our yeah. daily life, then it's logical to see it being used during disasters, right, or disaster relief, uh, because people will want to share information, get updates, uh, get assistance even. So they see this great, you know, Connect, connection tool as, as something they can use uh, during disasters. So some, some people say that we saw a shift with Hurricane Sandy, but I think that it started even earlier uh, with the Haiti earthquake, where people were able to create online communities uh, that were able to organize and, and you know, provide relief and help with search and rescue. Yeah, and for Haiti it was Twitter, mm -hmm. I think, primarily, mm -hmm. and maybe some Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think today Twitter still maintains its dominance in real-time information, what's going on? I think so. I think so because it's the most widely, you know, used. Mm -hmm. um, so most people have access to it. People know how it works uh -huh. uh, now better than maybe a couple years ago. So I think Twitter is probably the central social yeah. media channel where things like Periscope, uh, can be can definitely be promoted so live streams yeah. can be promoted yeah. but I think Twitter is definitely the one the one okay. standing although disasters generally have a visual factor to it mm -hmm. so perhaps Instagram will be uh, become more popular in the disaster. I guess we're gonna see how people use it mm -hmm. from that standpoint yeah um, so I mean being socially relevant and that why are people going to social media first for information rather than perhaps traditional media, TV, and radio. Yeah. So I think it was one of the creators of Periscope said that they want to provide unfettered and un unfiltered information, 
right, with yeah. the downfall that can come with it. Yeah. But essentially that's the idea, that if you go on social media, you will get raw, possibly firsthand information during a disaster. Yeah. So it's the idea that you might read about the earthquake before you actually feel it, which has yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it actually happened, okay. right? Yeah. Um, so because, um, you know, more traditional, you know, media channels, may not have time to, you know, put something out, may not be verified just yet. So people are, you know, uh, want to get information as soon as possible. Yeah. So they can go on Twitter and see what, you know, at John Doe is saying about a certain event. So it may or may not be correct, but at yeah. least there will be some, some sort of information, like something that people can, can chew on until okay. it comes on traditional media. So how is this social media push impacting traditional media? It makes them, um, you know, strive to keep up, uh, keep up with it, right? So it definitely, I mean, handles like CNN uh, are definitely, you know, want to be part of the conversation, yeah. conversation when something, when something happens. So there's, I don't think it's necessarily a, a competition anymore. It's more um, how do we, how do we keep up, right? How do we match what the information flow uh, on social media? Yeah, and I think also. I, it, it appears, I mean, this issue of verification. Mm -hmm. The media traditionally used to try to verify everything, the accuracy. Mm -hmm. And now I think some, in some cases they're putting information out and they'll add, add a little bit of a hedge. Mm -hmm. Being reported on Twitter and this is unverified, but they'll share that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, what do you think about that as a professional communicator? Well, I mean, so this is part of what I this is part of what I, stu I study with Kate Starbird and Emma Spiro um, within the the research group that we have at, at the University of Washington. Yeah. Um, so we do look at at that, and it's based on the fact that people don't like uncertainty, people don't like information vacuum, so something needs to come out, right? Yeah. So it's, it's the same idea that if you're, you know, you, you're on the street, you see a crowd, uh, maybe an ambulance, and you're going to want to know what's going on. So you might turn to the person next to you and be like, hey, do you know, do you know what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So basically, social media is that on steroids, right? Yeah. So the idea that some information will be put out there and might end up being misinformation or rumors um, is part of the information space. There's not necessarily something we can do about it. But what we have uh, discovered through our, our studies with Kate Starbert and Emma Spiro um, was that official sources, so whether it be an organization or an agency, do have an impact on, um, on the conversation online. Right? So if there's a rumor out, uh, something is, is maybe being uh, massaged the wrong way. Well, anyway. somebody could say the wine is <clears throat> not safe to drink. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, not using Flint as mm -hmm. uh, Michigan as an example, but that's a rumor that water's not safe to drink. So, yeah. so I mean, as an official source, right, where people are doing the work in the background to actually yeah. see if the water is safe or right. not safe to drink, um, then they have those official sources have uh, uh, they they need to put the right information out there, right? The official information yeah, yeah. and correct possible rumors. Yeah, to know that the rumor is actually happening. Yeah, right? absolutely. There's right. nothing. It's a it's a natural sense making okay. uh, behavior. So rumors will happen, and they're yeah. not necessarily bad because they could be true, false, or somewhere in between. So it's right. a natural sense making that I feel instead of fighting it. Uh, people would need to embrace it and see how they can they can you know manage that. Yeah, and so do you see an age difference that um, you know I don't know 55 and older still would work with the traditional media more so to get their news, or is age becoming less of a factor? I think that's a great question. I feel like age is definitely still a factor because uh, you know millennials have grown up with social media, yeah. so it's part of you know, I can say we, but it's part of what we do, right? Yeah. It's something that's become natural. I feel like beyond age, it's also habits and personalities as well. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're interested and you're a little curious, um, it could become a habit as well. So you can also, you know, regardless of your age, you can leverage whatever social media is offering. So it's not just an age thing. Okay. Um, a good thing about social media too, it's on a mobile device. So it, even if you don't have electrical power, Mm -hmm. and you don't have a battery-operated radio or TV anymore, it's a way to get information. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
What about this aspect, uh, and I've heard emergency managers say, well, you can't trust that information, or there could be people deliberately posting erroneous information, just trying to be disruptive mm -hmm. cyber vandals, yeah. I guess, or you know, social media vandals. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? So, it's, I mean, these are perfectly valid points because we definitely do see it happening. I think um, social um, emergency managers should focus their energy maybe more on how do we, how do we work with that, right? How yeah. do we strategize around those things versus how do we fight it, yeah. or how do we, you know, stay away from social media as much as yeah. possible? So basically, how can we, how can we work on that? Because it's not some, it's not a, it's not a fad, right? Yeah. Social media is, is here. It's not going away. It's not going away. Yeah. Um, at least not for now, right? It's yeah. probably going to evolve in different, you know, shapes or form, but it's not going away. This kind of communication will be around. Yep. So how do you uh, leverage that, right? Instead of instead of trying to, to fight it, like be part of the conversation because the conversation yep. will happen regardless of uh, whether or not whether you're there, you're there or not. Yeah, right? absolutely. And what about um, I use the term that you can uh, crowdsource. I mean. You don't have single voices. I, I use the example of somebody's reporting the Space Needle is on fire, mm -hmm. and there's only one report mm -hmm. of the Space Needle on fire. Well, mm, yeah, I bet it's maybe not on fire. Mm -hmm. That the crowd, meaning there'll be other people yeah. uh, posting on on that aspect. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. When when topics pick up and they start trending, then this is when. Yeah, it, and they're all mm -hmm. saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. Um, we're now really a last question kind of at the end of the program here. You know, what would you say to a public agency that's not using social media now, distrust, dis, distrust it in some ways, mm -hmm. or afraid of what their employees might use it or whatever? What would you tell them? To lay their fears or, you know, what have you? Um, that there are a lot of resources out there to help you get started um, and to help you keep going. Uh, and this is part of the work I did with the city of Kirkland, uh, the op with their Office of Emergency Management. Yes. So it's essentially, you know, um, there will be challenges, there will be things, there will be obstacles along the way for sure uh, at the organizational level, at the technological level. Yeah. Um, but that it's not, you know, it's not something that you can simply ignore. So there are resources out there and uh, a lot of people to help you with that. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I remember I met you down in Tumwater mm -hmm. at a, I want to say that it was Gov.2.0 as a social media. And there's like 150, I think, um, public um, government folks mm -hmm. in communications trying to learn more about social media. You were on a panel mm -hmm. as a subject matter expert. So uh, certainly you showed that expertise here t today. So thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. And you get this lovely Disaster Zone coffee fleet. Hopefully you drink coffee or you can drink tea yeah. or like today, water. Water. Yeah, there we <laughs> go. Um, take that as a memento. So uh, good luck yep. on your dissertation and we Look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Great. Thank you for right. having me. Thank you, Ellen. And for you folks uh, at home, this brings us to the end of our show for today. Thanks for tuning in and learning more about what you and others can do to become better prepared for disasters and be tuned in using social media. And remember, if you're going to get prepared, today is a good day to start. And have a great day and tune in again soon. Bye-bye.